Hey, what's up, peoples? Hardleg Joe here with the profile for Sports Control, an ultimate athlete deck which believes the best offense is a good defense. Using the new UA support out of Phantom Rage, we can easily set up enough disruptions to prevent our opponent from getting a first down before following it up with a Grand Slam OTK. Going over our deck list, we've got three copies of Karen's Worst Nightmare, Get Dunked On, Madden 02, a couple copies of Batman, three Ace of Spades, three Liberal Spiker, and three Sad Europeans. For spells, we've got one Talent Recruiter, one Stadium Recruiter, and three each of Capitalism the Card, Two Guys, One Shirt, High Five Bro, Big Stadium, and Less Big Stadium. Our only traps are three copies of Generic Tech Card and three copies of Sports-themed Penalty Gulag. Our extra deck consists of a whole bunch of random shit that we barely make. Uh, modern UAs are good at getting exactly two monsters on the field. Not enough to make Link Summoning really worth it, but enough to make the occasional Ixie. Of course, the levels of our monsters are all over the place, and UAs themselves have a pretty good toolbox for whatever you need, so it's rare that you actually have to go into these unless it's an emergency. The only things I'd strongly recommend here are Baguska and Exiton Knight, in case you get two level fours and no way to get into your bigger boys, as well as Volcasaurus, since we play a fair number of level fives, and two of them can make this to help close out close games. Everything else in here is just optional, play whatever you want, uh, especially when it comes to the Entis. This is just here to screw over Dogmatica, since they're pretty popular right now, and we have kind of a bad matchup against them. Honestly, though, with how little you go into the extra deck with UAs, you can and probably should play Pot of Extravagance or the new Pot of Disparity. The only reason I didn't is because I like to have some variety in the deck lists I make, so if an archetype doesn't need generic draw power to function, then I won't play it. And UAs are plenty consistent as is. I mean, just look at this. Hyper Stadium searches any UA monster when it's activated, and if you have another field spell in hand, you can activate its effect to normal summon twice this turn. This is great because the other field spell searches a UA monster every time you normal summon. Both of these are searchable by terraforming, as well as penalty box. If this trap is in the graveyard, you can banish it to search any UA spell trap which is why we play it at 3, along with 3 Foolish Burial Goods to send it to the graveyard. And if you already have both stadiums, then this can search Signing Deal instead, which summons any UA monster out of the deck. Its effects are negated, and it can't be used as Ixy or Synchro material, but that doesn't really matter because of how this archetype functions. If you're unfamiliar with UAs, all their monsters, except for one, share the same summoning condition. You can special summon them from your hand by returning another UA you control to the hand. Thematically, I think this is pretty cool. The monsters are all sports-themed, with some designated for offense while others are designated for defense. You bring out the offensive ones to attack with, and then return them to the hand in main phase 2 to swap out for your defensive line. This unique mechanic means that non-destructive monster negation is effectively useless against UAs, since you can just return the negated monster to your hand and summon something else. That's also what makes Signing Deal so effective. It summons negated monsters, but as long as you have another UA in your hand, you can just return the monster you summoned to your hand, and then immediately summon it back onto the field with all its effects restored. The only limit on this is that you can only summon each UA using its effect once per turn. So you can't just, like, infinitely swap monsters. You have to be a little tactical about it. As for what the UAs themselves actually do, let's go down the line with their individual effects. Dunker is your main offensive beat stick. It's got the highest base attack at 2500, does piercing damage, and if it inflicts damage, then you can target and destroy one card your opponent controls. Uh, this happens in the damage step, by the way, which means your opponent has limited ways to react to it. Kind of neat. Blockbacker, meanwhile, is a defensive card. It says when your opponent special summons a monster, you can change its battle position, and if you do, negate its effect. This can be a great way to shut down most extra deck monsters, as well as a lot of key play starters. Unfortunately, it doesn't work against Lynx, though, since they can't change position. That's why we only play it at 2, even though this is a defensive-minded deck. It's not good against every archetype, but it's good enough that you'll want a backup in case the first copy gets removed. Uh, moving on, our other main offensive tool is Mighty Slugger, who simply has a steamroller effect, saying your opponent can't activate cards when it attacks until after the damage step. 
A lot of people don't play this at all at the current game because it doesn't deal with any meta threats in particular, but I think it's worth citing because of how effectively it deals with certain rogue decks. Like, our biggest weakness is the grind game, and Slugger's effect stops things like Burning Abyss or Machina Citadel that would normally float when destroyed by battle. Honestly, you could probably play both this and Dunker at one. The only reason I have two Slugger is because I like having the extra copy to go into rank fives with Perfect Ace. Ace, by the way, is your best defensive card, which is why we played at three. It allows you to discard a card during your opponent's turn to negate any card or effect and destroy it. It and Blockbacker are both once per turns, but they're soft once per turns, meaning if you have two copies, you get one negate for each copy. As for these two UAs, they don't really fit into the offense-defense paradigm. We mostly play them because they're level 4, meaning you can normal summon them and then tag out for any other UA. Their effects are still useful, but they're focused more on supporting the other UAs. For instance, midfielder can swap a UA on the field with a UA in your hand as a quick effect. This can be used offensively during the battle phase to go in for extra damage, or defensively to help your monsters dodge targeted removal. It can also do stuff like trade a blockbacker that's already activated its effect for a perfect ace in your hand, allowing you additional disruption during your opponent's turn. A spiker's effect is much more defensive in nature, but only because it's limited to being activated during your opponent's turn. It says you can tuck a level 5 or higher UA from your hand into the deck in order to summon a UA with a different name from your deck. Not only does this let you get access to a second ace or blockbacker if you need it, but it also gives you easy access to UA Playing Manager, who's probably the best monster in the deck. He's the only one without the standard UA summoning effect. Instead of swapping, you can summon him from your hand anytime you summon another UA monster. Basically, he's willing to walk onto the field to support any player that needs his help. More importantly, when he's summoned, you can do one of two effects. Either target and destroy one card on the field, or blanket negate the effects of all non-UA monsters on the field. Not only can Libero just straight summon this out of the deck if you need it, but if manager is in your hand and you use Libero to summon anything else, it'll trigger the manager giving you disruptions on top of disruptions. And best of all, once you have access to this dude, you can just keep recycling him over and over. Because of the way UAs are worded, if you return him to the hand to summon any other UA, he'll be in your hand when that summon resolves, meaning you can immediately just summon him back out again. It's a hard once per turn, unfortunately, so you can't just pop the whole field by tagging it out over and over. But still, using him once per turn during both players' turns can be pretty brutal. And you know, even ignoring the disruption, Manager gives you much needed field presence, which the UAs previously lacked. Even going first where you don't want to pop anything, having this gives you the ability to put two monsters on board, an ace and a Madden, or an ace and a Libero Spiker, giving you at least two negates, maybe more depending on your hand. He also allows you to more easily use one of my favorite UA cards, Turnover Tactics. This is actually an old UA card that was rarely used in the past, specifically because it requires you to control two UA monsters with different names. These days, though, you can activate this pretty reliably, and its effect is kind of bonkers. What it does is, as a quick effect, shuffle all monsters on the field into their respective decks. Then, you can summon as many UAs with different names from your deck as you shuffled back. Then, your opponent gets to summon monsters out of their deck, up to the number of monsters you shuffled into their main deck. What this means is, if you use this while your opponent just controls extra deck monsters, it effectively works as drowning Raigeki, shuffling all their monsters back into the deck and giving them nothing in return. And even if they do have main deck monsters, this can still be worth it, because our two main defensive players, remember, are soft once per turns, meaning you can effectively refresh their negate abilities by shuffling them into the deck and then summoning them back out again. Or, you know, if you are worried about what they're going to summon out, you could just choose Manager and negate everything they bring out. Or pop it, whichever one works for you. Anyway, all that really leaves is our one tech spot, which I'm using for infinite and permanence. Uh, no real reason. I just thought more negation would be good in this deck full of negation, and it helps to play some traps in case you run into, like, Naturia Beast or something. 
You could just as easily replace this with hand traps, draw power, or any of the cards in the side deck. Uh, speaking of which, I do have some legit suggestions down here, most of which are designed for going second. I feel like Triple Tactics is your best option as a generic go second card, since it can be difficult getting over Nibiru tokens, and we don't often have a ton of discard fodder for something like Forbidden Droplet. Uh, plus, you can tribute the monster stolen for one of your level 5s, which, which is always fun. If your opponent is on a trap-heavy deck, then I'd recommend Galaxy Cyclone, since it has a little bit of synergy. Uh, you can discard it to negate with Ace, and then you have an additional pop in the graveyard. And finally, there's UA Powered Jersey. The most tonkinest, strongest otk list equip card of the damn game. When equipped to a UA, it gives it a thousand attack and defense, lets them deal double battle damage when attacking monsters, and lets the equipped monster attack again if it destroys a monster. Equip this to Dunker, and you can just dunk your opponent's soul into the depths of hell. Uh, which was why we play a second copy in the side deck, just so you can make that happen more often going second. Uh, there's also one more defensive UA in the side deck, Goalkeeper. It can prevent your UAs from being destroyed by card effects, and it has big defense. It's not really worth it in most matchups, but I think it's worth playing at least one copy for those niche situations where it is useful, since getting your monsters popped is one of your biggest weaknesses. Uh, anyway, though, that's the deck. I hope you liked it. UA is certainly one of my favorite archetypes, and this new support really makes them playable again. Like the video if you did like it, comment if there's any changes you would make, and subscribe if you want more strange deck profiles in general. I do one of these every other week. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, good luck, and have fun.